Hello, you fabulous people. It's Tea Time with Tia. How are you? I hope you're having a great day. Are you celebrating Independence Day? Well, if you did not know, Independence Day, which was stamped in 1776, were for Americans that were actually considered free. But unfortunately, that was not the truth for every American. And for some who are celebrating that day, you are free because you're in Christ. For those who are celebrating that day and not free in Christ, you're still not free. Because only Jesus can set you free, all right? So Independence Day means different things to different people. But I want to talk to those who are in Christ and you don't know you're free. Or you don't know the freedom that you actually have. Let me break it down. Matthew chapter 11, 28 through 30. It says, then Jesus said, Come to me, all of you who are weary and carry heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. Let me teach you, because I am humble and gentle at heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy to bear, and the burden I give you is light. Again, that's coming from the book of Matthew, chapter 11, verse 28 through 30. And the reason why this is important because it's a shame that the Son came to set us free. And we do not know or understand what that means. Because some of you all may be under certain authority, all right, um, leadership authority, who do not really break the Word of God down to you in its simplest form. So you know you have rights in God's kingdom. Now, because Jesus came the way he did, and he is the model for us. And if you are under those who are very controlling, and they, um, you, you, know, you don't have any peace and you're intimidated, that is not the Jesus leadership that we see written. If Jesus said he was humble, he was the greatest leader, and was the example of all leadership, then we should definitely understand what it means to follow him all right now remember the apostle paul shared something with us he said listen follow me as i follow christ that was a given indication that he wasn't telling you to follow him as paul the apostle he was making it clear if he's following christ then follow him because he was modeling christ's nature and I know, and I understand that sometimes when we read the letters of Paul and his stand on uh, certain things, it comes across so strong and adamant as if, you know, he might have been speaking with a very strong voice or tone or coming across intimidated. But he also gave us letters letting us know that he wasn't this type of person that he was, uh, might have been made out to be. Now, I'm saying this because I remember a letter he wrote saying that, uh, through his writings, his words may come across um, in a strong voice. However, when he was present, he did not come across that uh, in, the way, in the same way that his writings were. So sometimes if we're not careful, we can misinterpret what the Word of God is saying. Or, I mean, not just that, but not only can we misinterpret if we're not careful, we can also give that same wrong interpretation to those that God has called some of us to lead. Now, being in authority is different from being in control, okay? You don't control the situation just because you're an authority over it. Now, the Word of God does tell us to obey those that have the rule over us. But I believe that word is kind of, can be taken kind of strong to some who, mis, who misuse that and abuse it for their own benefit. But when you think of a, someone in rule, think of a king who's ruling, not as far as controlling, but he's the monitor to make sure everything is running smoothly in the palace, right? Just like a judge. When the judge, make, when the judge makes a ruling, the judge is making sure that the decision is based on ethical standards that have already been in place beforehand. The laws are written so long ago. So the judge has to make sure that the ruling is fair and just, again, according to what was written in the laws. That is how it is when we are to respect the authority that Yahweh has given us. If you're on your job 
and you have someone who is an authority, again, all they are to do is to monitor and make sure you are operating according to the standards that you signed up for, right? Well, that's how it is in the kingdom of heaven. The leaders that God has placed in, in the kingdom is to make sure that everything is operating according to God's plan. However, it still should be done according to the model that Jesus gave us. And the scripture also tells us who the son set free is free indeed. So if Jesus set us free, who has the right, all right, in authority to make you bound again? Because that would be a double standard, right? So, yes, we should be held accountable by those that Christ said should be an authority. But the one that holds you accountable should also do it with the love of the Lord, okay? With understanding, just like a judge, making sure that you're accountable to God's rules, God's laws, which are in itself, the yoke is easy and the burden is light. He did tell us to take up our cross and follow him every day. But the weight of our cross we should still be able to bear it because he told us he would not put more on us than we can bear. So if you're heavy laden and you feel burdened down so much so that you find yourself getting depressed, you're anxious because he tells us be anxious for nothing, mean worry about nothing, but in everything through prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, he told us to make our requests known to him. That's coming from Philippians 4 and 6. Then if you go down to the verse Philippians 4, 8 and 9, he breaks it down to tell us what we should think about and how we should think about these things so that we can have a peace of mind. Because he also tells us that he would give us peace that surpass all understanding. Now, these principles were written long before any of us got here. So no one has the right to come and change the format of the principles, okay? Now, the Lord is the one who put government in place. So he's the one that put authority in place. And Jesus said the government sits on his shoulder. So think about it like this. If the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords is the governor, I mean, is, is the head of the government, right? And the government sits on his shoulder. Should not those that are called to be in government position that he called the same as the one who called it? Well, now, that's the fact check. If anyone who wants to come behind me and do a fact check, please do. Because I don't give my opinions. I don't have an opinion. I'm only giving you what Yahweh said. Please. I don't believe in debating God's word. I used to be a great debater before the movie even came out called The Great Debaters. I was so glad when I got free in Jesus. He let me know, you know, it's not even necessary. Don't even argue. Don't debate his word. I'm so happy that all I have to do is give the message. I'm just the messenger and I'm good with that. I'm just the one who is called to give this truth. Now, every day that we are called as leaders to give this truth, it doesn't make it easy for us to live this truth. We must model. We must be first partakers of what we preach now. But by the same token, thank God for his grace. That's why we have to have grace in other people, because we ourselves need the same grace. And Yahweh did say this, he that has mercy shall receive mercy. And well... Yeshua said it, who is Jesus. He is Yahweh's son, so it's still one and the same. But I just want to make clear if you're trying to find out where this is in Scripture so you know that that's in the New Testament. But yes, it's so important that we don't get beside ourselves and get caught up because God has given us a position. And then we, you know, we go to the left and start doing our own thing. And I know I touched on this subject a little bit more in depth last week. However, I just wanted to come behind and add a little bit more to it and give it a little bit more clarity, all right? Because it is important for us to follow those that Christ says follow. Follow those who follow Christ or as they follow Christ, all right? Don't follow their ways. You know what? It gets a little deeper than that. When Jesus is talking to the people, all right, and the disciples, he said, listen, 
when the Pharisees uh, educate you, do what they tell you, but do not follow their ways. So if a person that um, has authority over you is telling you the truth, okay, receive the truth, but do not follow the ways that they live by if they are not living in line with the truth that they teach, right? If they're contrary to what's true, please, by all means, dismiss yourself. Free yourself because Christ came to set you free. Do not get entangled again with the yoke of bondage. That's what Christ said. Do not, okay? It's not worth it. Now, it is so interesting how the Lord has already made a path for each one of us that leads to his eternal kingdom. However, the choice is yours. You have to remain faithful because you don't know when he's coming back. But thank God he gave us room for repentance. He has more grace for us than some people do. It's interesting how the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords who created us has more grace for his people than some of us have had with each other. But Jesus told us to love one another. That's what he said. He said be patient with one another and prefer one another. Now, of course, some of us have more grace in that area than others. But we all should be striving and we don't have any time to look down on anyone. The main one we should be addressing first and foremost is ourself. And if we have children, of course, we have to keep them in order. But the main one you want to keep in order is you and you alone. Now, I just hope today was a great day for you. And until the next time you sit with me, God bless you while you enjoy your tea and this Independence Day.